Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Uh, if this is your first time, today we're going to be talking about the Chromecast with Google TV. So this thing just came out not too long ago and uh, I'm going to go through an unboxing, I'm going to go through setup, and then we'll go through the user interface. Now this video is going to be a little longer so if you need to skip ahead I'll leave timestamps. So you've got a lot with this, uh, this here Chromecast, right? So you've got YouTube, YouTube TV, Netflix, Prime, Spotify, Disney, uh, you know, just all sorts of different apps. And this is just a few of them. There's so many apps you'll have to go through uh, and look at. Now, once you open up the box, you, you see it's nicely packed. Everything's right here. You've got your Chromecast dongle on the left. Um, let me get that straightened up again. Okay, there we go. And you got your remote here on the right. So, yeah, I mean, not much to it. You get your starting guide here, your little quick start guide, eh? And, uh, I hate these little the flaps because they don't make sense to me, but I got it. There we go. Um, let's just put that over there. And under that, you'll see you've got your USB cable and adapter. And if you lift that up, you also got some batteries under it. And that goes into the remote control, which uh, I made that mistake at the beginning. And my wife gets on to me for this all the time, but I always have trouble opening up things. So you've got your USB cable, and this will plug directly into the adapter here. And that's what you're going to use to power the Chromecast. And you open up the box here and inside you will find a nice sleeve holding your Chromecast dongle. And this thing just feels quality. I don't know. I, I love these little sleeves. I need to find a good use for them. And the thing looks great. I mean, it's, it's beautiful. And this thing, for being so tiny, sure does pack a little wallop, you know. It's got so many features inside. And the remote control is quite honestly one of my favorite remote controls I've ever seen. It's so simple and sexy. I mean, just look at it, you know? Just look at it. Can you see it? Oh, it's beautiful. It's a beaut. I love it. Anyways, you get your YouTube button and your Netflix button and your power button. Uh, but power won't work until you put batteries in, so let's get that in there. Okay, here we go. Batteries in, and we are good to go. What you're going to want to do is plug it up to the wall not to the TV, which is what I've always been doing. Uh, you could have it dangling off the TV, not plugged in, but it's gonna take much longer to load everything up. You need that extra power in there. So I'd, I'd definitely plug it up to a wall if you can. And once it's plugged up, it's gonna load up the Google symbol and we should be good to start setup in a second here. Any second, you know. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, that's pretty. I like that little square block with some rainbows going around it. Google TV. Ooh, that's sexy. Now you're going to want to open up your Google Home app or if you don't have it, download it because you need to, I think you need that to set it up actually. I don't know if you can set it up without it. Um, but basically you just scan the QR code uh, either by adding a new device or hitting the uh, set up Chromecast button and it'll kind of get you into these menus. Once you've done that, you're just going to go ahead and select uh, what streaming services you actually have, eh? like HBO, Showtime, uh, all, all those fancy little apps, Disney Plus. And once you do that, what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and pre-install those for you. So once you open up the actual user interface, all that stuff's just going to be there waiting for you. Eh? It's going to be very simple and very easy. I love the way they set that up. It was It's just, I don't know, it's just... Well thought out, it seems like. Now we just gotta wait. Uh, lots of loading screens. I'm trying not to cut out as many as I can just so that you can kind of feel what the setup's gonna be like. And then once you get through that, it's gonna ask you to set up your soundbar or whatever you're using for audio. I'm using a soundbar, bar, a Vizio one, so I'm gonna just go down to uh, soundbar, click on that. And now I need to go down to Vizio which could take a while if you're going down like this, but uh, eventually I start realizing, you know, you got to go to uh, <laughs> go to the letters. It's going to be a little bit faster, eh? just just a wee bit. And then uh, open it up, open up the Vizio app, and it'll start playing some music. And you basically just have to make sure that your volume rocker works, you know? And for me, I've got an older Vizio, so it, it didn't work right off the bat. You know, the first one didn't, so 
I honestly was a little worried that it wasn't going to work at all. So I ended up, you know, telling it the truth. I said, you know, volume button is not working. It's not. And then I was like, oh, trying another code. And I was like, oh, okay, that works. I'm down with that. So I go over to the volume rocker and guess what? She works. Absolutely great. Now I've got the volume working and all you have to do is hit yes. Now you select your TV because you can also control the power on and off with your TV using this little thing too. So all you have to do is hit the power button once you select your TV maker. And just like that, it powers down. You tap it one more time and it'll power up your TV. There you go. You basically have uh, an all in one remote now. It's pretty crazy. I, I didn't expect that when I first got this product, honestly. Now just hit next and it starts installing the apps. Now this, this takes a very long time. So I just cut out all that crap. It took me about 10 minutes just doing that. And then you're good to go. Start exploring. So you've got your for you page right off the bat, a search button, uh, which is just bringing up the assistant to do a search. And because the app's still loading up, like I said, this is a fresh install right now. Uh, first time starting it up. It's gonna be a little glitchy because it's still downloading stuff and restarting stuff. So I found that it would kind of just go blank every now and then, which is completely normal, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> At least I'm 80% I'm sure that this is a normal, a normal occurrence, you know? So over here, you're going to find your for you page. And this is where you're going to see all the stuff you set up in the beginning with the app, along with Google's recommendations for shows uh, that you might like and movies you might like. So there's a bunch of genres under there too. Uh, but if you look, you get your app section and this is where all those apps in the setup process ended up going. I don't know why slings there. I didn't select that, but it's there anyways. Now the top picks for you are pretty great because you know, this is what YouTube thinks and Google thinks you're going to actually enjoy. And you know, for the most part, it looks pretty accurate. I've been using Google products for a long time and you know, like Shit's Creek is amazing. I love that show. Uh, and I haven't even watched any of those other trending shows. So that's interesting. Now, if you notice what's really cool about the Google TV so far. Oh, hold on. See, things are still loading in the back. Like I said, this is a fresh start. I'm trying not to cut this stuff out so you don't freak out when it happens to you. Uh, all this stuff's loading in the background, so it's gonna be a little glitchy at the beginning. Now, anyways, let's go over to movies. So the movies tab, if you look in here, these are the most popular movies. I don't know what the top section is. I think they're just like the featured movies for each I guess each streaming service. Then you've got the popular movies and under every movie you see, it's gonna give a Rotten Tomato score and it's gonna tell you where it's streaming and if it costs any money. So I, that's just a neat thing, eh? Like, that's fantastic, it's so cool. The only thing I, I don't know for sure yet and I need to figure out is if I can make it so I don't see things that like, like Sling TV, I don't have Sling TV. I don't know why it's popping up here to begin with. I didn't, I don't think I selected it when I was setting it up. Anyway, so that's movies. It's got all the stuff you need in there. Uh, shows is very similar. You know, it's, it's the same kind of thing. You got the featured stuff up top here, eh? And underneath you got popular shows, new shows, trending shows, uh, and then all the other genres. And this stuff may or may not be tailored to me. I'm not quite sure. Uh, it might just be showing me what's trending at the moment or what's new. Well, I could be wrong. I bet the genres are suggested and I do love me some Bob's Burgers. So now the app section, this is the crazy section. Okay. There are so many apps for this thing already, and this is where it can actually expand more. So like I said, all your apps are still right here. Your apps, the ones, the ones you have downloaded. Uh, you can search for new apps by doing a voice search, or you can go into these different categories and find an app you'd like. And like I said, there are so many apps, guys. Uh, if you're looking for a specific app, it's probably going to be easier for you if you just look that up on Google's website to see if it's supported, because there's no way I can go through and tell you what apps are here and what apps aren't. There's just too many. 
And if you're having trouble finding an app for some reason, you can just hold down the assistant button and ask it to download that particular app, like Comedy Central, and end up pulling it up for me, and uh, all I had to do is hit install. It was really nice, really simple. Then you're good to go. That's It's super easy. And you can also open up the App Store if, if you think that's going to be an easier way for you to find apps. Because it's not so easy to search the apps just directly on the Chromecast or Google TV. I don't know what you want to call it anymore. One other thing that's kind of cool that you can do is you can actually select your apps like Netflix. If you hold down the middle button, it'll allow you to move them. So you can move which ones you use the most up forward or move the ones you use least back. And to play, all you do, or to open it up, all you do is click on the app. So here I clicked on Netflix and let's just see how it loads up. And just like that, we are in Netflix. I just log in with my account and we're all set. There we go. Nice and easy. Now, if you want to just jump into a movie without going through the app itself, you can go to Google TV, click on a movie, and just hit watch on Netflix. It's that simple, eh? Like, it's really not complicated, especially with Netflix. Netflix is integrated really well with Google TV. I mean, what? That took us all of, like, three seconds to get into an actual movie? Like, oh, what a wonderful experience, right? Like, that's how TV should be right now. The other things you can do is you can pull up a TV show and you can see uh, how many seasons it has and look at those. You can add things to your watch list and you can see the different ways to watch one particular show. So this one's on Hulu, Prime Video, and you can buy episodes with Google TV. So I just think that's super neat. And then also, if you want, you can, like I said, watch list it, but you can also like it or dislike it. And I think it's going to tailor videos towards you. Or you can say you've watched it. And once you do that, that stuff's just going to show up in your library up at the top here eh, as a watch list. So that's just, it's super neat and super easy. Another thing you can do, another shortcut, is go over a video, long press the middle button, and it'll kind of give you a shortcut to all the selections you just had. So you can either watch trailer, like it, watch list it, all that without actually going into the menu which is really nice, you know, I, it just saves a step. Google really thought out the UI on this. Like, they did a great job figuring out how to uh, go from one thing to another. Now, one thing that I did notice, though, is that because they are all separate apps, if you go into Amazon's Amazon Prime and you try to watch a show straight from Google TV, uh, it's always going to ask you to tell it who's watching. Whereas if you go into a Netflix one directly from Google TV, it'll just load straight into it. And I guess it's just because it's a different company and it's a different way they want you to go about, uh, you know, using their service. It's just an extra step uh, that I guess Google couldn't get around. You know, I'd love to click on a show and go straight in, but it just wouldn't let me do that with uh, Amazon. Now, one thing I did notice about the Google TV, especially it's another thing with Amazon is that a lot of these shows were saying that I couldn't watch it. You know, I couldn't watch it. Eh? Like it says that it was locked, but then you go into the Amazon prime app itself and those episodes are totally there to watch. So there's definitely some communication issues going on between Google TV and Amazon in particular. Uh, Netflix is a lot more streamlined, but Amazon seems to really want you to go into their app as opposed to just using Google TV to go straight to their content, which I'm guessing that's just, you know, Google and Amazon have kind of been fighting for a while. So that's probably part of that. But no matter what, you still get to watch your content. So that's great. Now casting. Now, this is the thing I was curious about. I wanted to make sure I could still cast from my phone if I wanted to. And it works perfectly fine. It brings the show right up, just like the old Chromecast did. Uh, nothing new. You don't have to worry about it not working. It totally works. And also, if you want to do uh, screen capture, you know, you can actually cast your phone up, much like the other Chromecast. And what I was surprised with was how good it is, though. Like, 
there's like no hardly any latency you know i was able to scroll up and down and see this big old fluffy cat eh? and it worked out perfect the other thing that's super cool about this is that it's basically another google home so you can tell it to turn on lights you can uh, tell it to show you the nest doorbell if you've got one hooked up and it'll pull up your doorbell video right onto the screen uh, it just takes a hot second because I don't know it just takes a second or you can even ask it to tell you a joke you know it, it is a Google home so it's super fun <laughs> so would I purchase this again uh, guys I gotta be honest with you I I didn't expect to like this Google TV as much as I do I think this is a fantastic step by Google uh, combining an Android TV experience with a Chromecast uh, I I honestly don't know what else I could ask for other than just Amazon and other apps working a little bit nicer with Google. But other than that, you know, it's an A plus for me, 100%. If this uh, review has helped you at all, please subscribe. It helps me out a ton. It really does. Uh, and if not, I still hope you have a great day and uh, take care. <laughs>